All right, welcome back everyone to 7.5 Strategy of Integration. Now, especially with these next two videos, they're more difficult, uh, but I really recommend that you pause the video and you try these on your own first uh, because they're sort of like magic tricks, right? As soon as I show you how it's done, uh, you can never put the genie back in the bottle. So these are interesting problems, and I really recommend that you try them on your own first. But uh, let's get to it. Uh, with the spoilers. All right, so we will evaluate this integral of x cubed e to the x squared dx. So looking at this, this looks like a power of x times e, which so our mind should automatically think, hey, integration by parts. Uh, but the problem here is that we have e to the x squared, and we've never had this before. So we'd like to try to make this just e to the variable itself. So maybe the first step here is actually to use u substitution with u equals x squared. So if that's u, then du would have to be 2x dx. And you can see we actually have the x, we have a dx. Uh, so therefore, let's go ahead and make this du over 2 equals x dx. So therefore, we can write this as the integral. And let's see, if I eat up one of those x's, I'll have, still have two left over. So x squared e to the u and du over 2. But now x squared, we can see that's my definition of u. So I'm going to exchange that for a u. All right, so now I can write this as 1 half the integral of u e to the u du. And now this looks like exactly something we can use integration by parts on. So now let's try this. Uh, I guess I've already used u, so let me maybe use w instead of u. So okay, I'll use w's and b's. So w is going to be u, and then dw is going to be du, and then dv is going to be e to the u du, so therefore v is equal to e to the u. So therefore integration by parts says that my integral is going to be equal to wv, minus the integral of v dw, so e to the u uh, du. Oh, and it looks like I, I had 1 half times this integral. Uh, so let me see here. I need to add this 1 half. So let me just move this over a little bit. And 1 half times all of this. OK. So let me go ahead and expand this out. So 1 half e, sorry, u e to the u minus e to the u plus c. Oh, I forgot it again. My one half, I need to distribute this to both terms. Let me move this over. There we go. One half. All right. And now let's substitute back in. Instead of u, I have x's. So right, u is x squared. So I will write my final answer. Um, let's see here. It's one half x squared e to the x squared minus 1 half e to the x squared plus c. OK. And there we are. That's my final answer. And of course, you could take the derivative of this to double check uh, that we get back to where we started. All right, so this is a nice one. We had to use sub u substitution and integration by parts here. So let's do one more. Ah, so this one seems kind of tricky. I haven't come across anything like this yet. So let's think back to our strategy, right? So the first step is that we should think about, can we simplify this at all? And so, well, the only way to simplify this square root would be maybe it's a perfect square. So right, we're looking at step one, simplify the integrand, see if we can do this. So if it's a perfect square, then yes, it works out. So let's double check here. Well, what would the perfect square need to be? It would need to be x minus 1 quantity squared. Uh, but when I FOIL that out, I get the x squared and I get the minus 2x, but then it's plus 1, not plus 2. So it's close, but not exactly there. OK. Now we look for maybe an obvious substitution. So staring at this right now, it's not, there's not really an obvious substitution. So let's skip this for the time being. Uh, and then let's go back and try to classify it as its form. Uh, so let's let's see here. Go down, going down the list, well, this is obviously not a trigonometric function. It's not a rational function. And it's not of any of these forms that it looks like we can use integration by parts on, but it definitely is a radical function. 
So, okay, radicals. Well, we need to use a trigonometric substitution. And we know, right, there's a bunch of different forms that we have here uh, that help us identify should we use sine, tangent, or secant. And while staring at this, it doesn't fall into any of those forms. So the claim is, well, maybe we actually do need to use a quick u substitution. So I'd like to use this idea of completing the square. We have this nice square here, x minus 1 squared. And the claim is uh, our function is just that square plus 1, right? Because if we add 1 here, I would get the x squared minus 2x plus 2. Okay, so now let me rewrite this at this point. Let me write u is equal to x minus 1. So therefore, du is just the same thing as dx. And now my integral becomes the square root of u squared plus 1 du. And now this is of the form uh, right, that we should use tangent for. right? So now we can have rewritten this so that we see we should use tangent when it comes to our trigonometric substitution. right? Because whenever we saw the square root of um, a squared plus x squared, or in this case u squared, we know tangent. So u is tangent theta, du is secant squared theta d theta. Forgive me for reusing u. Um, so substituting these in, root tangent squared theta plus 1 times secant squared theta d theta. And now, of course, we chose tangent because tangent squared theta plus 1 is something, I think. Oh, yes, and I should mention my interval here. Theta is ranging from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Usually this helps us get rid of these absolute values. All right, so tangent theta, uh, tangent squared theta plus 1, what is this? Well, let's remind ourselves, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So now if I divide through by cosine squared on all sides, well, let's see, I'll get tangent squared theta plus 1 is secant squared theta. So there we go. I'm going to substitute that in. Instead of tangent squared theta plus 1, I'm going to put secant squared theta. Okay, times secant squared theta d theta. And now when I take this uh, square root of a square, I get the absolute value. And now again, because I'm in this in nice interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, it's going to be positive. So the absolute value won't do anything. So let's see, I'll have three secants altogether. Ooh, so now we are safely in trigonometric, well not safely, but trigonometric integrals. Uh, but unfortunately, this doesn't fall into any of the categories that we have a nice rule for. Uh, so let me think. I'm going to try to get a few tangents here to see if I can make it fit into one of these situations where I have a rule for. So I'm going to exchange two of my secants for a tangent squared theta plus 1. So two of them become a tangent squared theta plus 1 times secant theta. And OK. So now I can go ahead and distribute. So I have tangent squared theta times secant theta plus secant theta. And now I can integrate the secant theta, so I'm really happy about that. But now staring at this, oh man, this tangent squared theta times secant theta, I really don't have a good strategy. It's not a clear, you know, you should be tangent or you should be secant or anything like this. So I need to think about this. Um, and now might be a good time to pause the video and have you think about it as well. So I'll give you a chance. Um, but the claim is we should use integration by parts. So I'm going to let u be tangent of theta, because the idea is that dv, I want to be tangent theta secant theta d theta, because that I know the integral of. right? The integral of this is going to be secant of theta. OK, so according to integration by parts, well, uh, this is going to be uv. So this is tangent theta, secant theta, minus the integral of v du. So secant theta, uh, well, I guess there's three of them, right? Because secant squared theta. All right, so altogether, three of them. And then plus, of course, my uh, second part is this natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta plus a constant. And now we have to remember. All of this right here was equal to secant cubed theta d theta, right? this integral. And notice that I have another integral of secant cubed theta d theta. 
ah, so this is actually one of these that wraps around on itself, right? Because I can add this quantity to both sides, right? And then I would get two of them, two secant cubed theta d theta. And that's equal to, well, the rest of the stuff on this right-hand side. And so if I wanted to solve for this integral of secant cubed theta d theta, well, I should just divide by 2. All right, and there we are. And now the final step, well, I need to take actually a few steps here to get back to x. So I have this uh, theta, which was defined by u is equal to tangent of theta, right there. So everywhere I see a tangent of theta, I'm going to put a u. But now I also need to figure out what about for my secant of thetas, right? So here's my theta. Uh, tangent is supposed to be opposite over adjacent. So since it's just equal to u, that's going to be u over 1. And therefore, the hypotenuse is the square root of 1 plus u squared. And so therefore, secant. Secant is normally, uh, let's see, well, that's 1 over cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So there's my hypotenuse over adjacent is just 1. So likewise, again, secant is going to be the same thing, this root 1 plus u squared plus tangent, which is u, plus c, all over 2. And that was my u, but u was originally defined back here as x minus 1. Right? That was my original u. So now everywhere I see a u, I'm going to plug in x minus 1. So my final answer is x minus 1 times the square root of 1 plus x minus 1 quantity squared plus the natural log of the absolute value of the square root of 1 plus x minus 1 that quantity squared plus x minus 1 all inside of that absolute value plus my constant integration all divided by 2. Whew. All right, and that is our final answer right there. And my goodness, looking back at this problem, all the things that we used for it, right? We used a U substitution. We used integration by parts. We used trigonometric substitution. Uh, we used then trigonometric integrals. So this was a tough problem, but it covered a lot. So uh, we don't have any homework for this section. So I'll see you next time in 8.1.